Hi everyone! We are here in front of the Coyote Habitat at the Living Desert and today I want to introduce Emma, one of our animal care keepers who specializes in native wildlife and she's going to talk to you today about coexisting with coyotes. Take it away Emma! Hi everyone! My name is Emma and I'm one of the animal care keepers here at the Living Desert and today I'm honored to talk to you about my favorite uh, desert species, the coyote. So um, you may have been hearing s news stories about how a lot of wildlife is being seen more often in the times that we're in right now. Um, so as humans are staying home, it may appear um, that wildlife is becoming more active and more visible. Um, and this is the case for coyotes as well. So one of the things that we talk about a lot when we talk about coyotes is how to coexist with them, which is just a fancy way of saying how to live with them. Um, and the first step of that process is to really understand how coyotes live their lives, what's normal for them. Um, so one of the things we like to talk about is how coyotes are crepuscular, um, which is a fun word meaning most active in dawn and dusk. And although coyotes are, you know, have this term crepuscular, it doesn't mean that they might not also be seen during any time of the day, including the daytime. So coyotes are a very opportunistic, very highly adaptable species. Um, and they are also um, omnivores. So coyotes will eat anything from um, prey items like rabbits and rodents to actually some fruits and vegetables. So not a lot of people are aware that they also eat plant material. Um, here in the desert, one of the things that they might eat are the mesquite pods that fall off the trees and also fan palm berries. Uh, so we hear a lot of misconceptions about coyotes. Um, a lot of people are concerned that they might be moving into a neighborhood and that they might be there to eat your cats or to get into your trash cans. Um, and certainly coyotes have adapted to live in a lot of different habitats and this does include sometimes our neighborhoods and even big cities. Um, and the truth of that matter is that coyotes are only coming into those areas because humans are leaving out resources which we like to call attractants. Um, so sources of food, water, and shelter that might be drawing a coyote into an area like a neighborhood. Um, now, another important thing to understand about coyotes is that they are by nature afraid of people. So you probably have read news stories about how coyotes are very bold, how they walk up to humans, how they walk up to people when they're walking their dogs. Um, and this is just, these are more often cases where coyotes have gotten a little bit too used to people. So maybe people are either intentionally feeding them or unintentionally feeding them. For example, by leaving pet food outside in your yard. Um, or leaving an unsupervised pet. So one of the easiest ways to coexist with coyotes is just to take a look at the resources that are found around your home and consider what those attractants might be and then focus on removing those attractants or just making some small um, simple lifestyle changes that can reduce conflict with coyotes. Okay. So one of the most important steps you can take to coexist with coyotes is to focus on removing those attractants like your pet food and water bowls that might be left outside. Um, it's especially important to take these inside at night um, and then also things like securing your trash can. So we all know that there's a lot of other animals that might be interested in your trash like raccoons or possums. Um, so you can either only take your trash out in the morning or you can secure it with something like a bungee cord so that no animals can get into that trash and cause a conflict. Um, coyotes are also very brave uh, by nature. So they're very curious, they're very intelligent, they want to explore new things. So sometimes they will also enter neighborhoods just to kind of look around and see what resources are there. So another important aspect to coexisting with coyotes is what we call coyote hazing, um, which is just a fancy way of saying it's um, making a lot of noise to remind coyotes to be afraid of people. So you want to always do this in conjunction with removing those attractants because you want to make the area as least friendly to coyotes as possible. So they're not there finding food resources, um, and if they do see a human like yourself, uh, what you want to do with hazing is just make a lot of noise. Um, the key is to look at the coyote, look them in the eyes. Um, you can shout things like, go away coyote. Um, you can have a noisemaker like a whistle or even a can of beans. Anything that makes noise at all is perfect. Um, and the key with hazing is to continue to haze the coyote until they leave the area. By doing this, you're telling them, hey, this is a scary, loud, noisy area and you don't want to be here. Um, this is really effective for coyotes because, like I mentioned earlier, they are by nature afraid of people, so they really don't want to hang out in an area that's loud and noisy. 
Another important aspect of hazing, um, just like removing attractants, is to get all of your neighbors and everyone living around you on board with the same plan. Because if you're doing a really great job of hazing and removing attractants in your yard, but your neighbor is not, then the coyote might simply move to the next yard over. So it's important to remember that they're very smart, um, but humans are very smart as well. So we can definitely think of solutions and ways to coexist with them. Um, and coyotes are definitely an important part of the desert ecosystem. So it's important to make sure that they're still out there doing their normal business, which is catching a lot of rodents. Um, a single coyote can eat up to 1800 rodents in one year. So that makes a huge difference when we're talking about having a natural balance to the desert. Um, and they're also a very iconic symbol of the desert, so it's important to have them around. You may have seen our coyotes climbing trees. Um, so this is a behavior that a lot of people are surprised to find out about. Um, but coyotes are actually really good at climbing as well as digging and jumping. So if you're thinking that your yard is fenced in and you're still having issues with coyotes, we encourage people to think about, you know, do you have a tree along the length of your fence or along the length of your property anywhere? Um, if you do, that might be the way that coyotes are entering and exiting your yard. So that's something else to take into consideration. Okay, so here at the Living Desert, we do have three male coyotes. Their names are Storm, Loki, and Thor, and they all just turned four years old at the beginning of this month. All three of them were rescued as orphans, and now they get to live their life here at the Living Desert and be great ambassadors for all coyotes of the world. Thank you so much for listening to our chat about coyotes. Um, some good coyote resources to check out, especially if you have a lot of time at home right now, you can read the book Project Coyote, which gives a whole overview of coyotes and the interesting ways that they've adapted to living in different ecosystems. And if you want more information about hazing or coexistence with coyotes, you can check out the organization Project Wildlife.